Hi, AT from CNC at Home. What I want to do today is just kind of cover some basic shop safety things. Anybody who's worked around power tools know there's things that you need to do to remain safe because power tools can be dangerous. Even though we're working with smaller machines here in the shop, and I use the term shop loosely, it's a utility closet, we have a laser, and this laser can burn wood. It, it can burn you, so you need to respect it. And then here we have our CNC router. Again, it's small, but these little stepper motors can put out enough torque. You can get your fingers pinched in here, um, and that can really hurt. Uh, plus, we have this spindle. It spins at 7,000 RPMs. It can catch on clothing or jewelry, just like any larger machine. Again, not quite as powerful, but you can really get hurt. Plus, the bits that are on here are sharp. You can cut yourself. So when working with these machines, we have safety stops so that the machine won't overdo its travel and it'll stop. And there's one way back here, it's hard to see. I also have an emergency stop button. Now this is really more of a pause than an emergency stop. It will stop the X, Y, and Z travel on the machine. The spindle will keep spinning, so that will not stop. The plug for this whole machine is right back here. I typically leave it unplugged, but when it's plugged in, it's right here. So if something really bad's going on, I can de-energize the entire system that easily. I can also hit one of the limit switches. Typically it would be my X0 limit switch, and that will stop everything as well. Over on the laser, there are no limit switches on here. Um, so we do have to be careful. The, the, you know, the motors are, um, aren't quite as, well, I guess the motors are just as strong as the ones over on the router. It's just they're connected through a belt versus going through a jack screw where you can get some really good mechanical advantage. Being driven with the belt, not quite as scary. This is a five and a half watt laser. It will burn you. If you get your hand down here and that laser comes across, it'll burn you. The other thing it'll, it loves to do is it burns wood. I have my waste boards down here and as you can see it's burned through um, several times on there. I've never had an issue with fire. Keeping in mind heat, wood, there's a potential for fire. Just in case I have a fire extinguisher right behind me that I can grab and put out any kind of fire that might happen, potentially with either machine. Less likely with the router, more likely with the laser and wood or paper, depending on what I'm cutting. Another safety thing with both machines are goggles. I have two pair. I have a, a green pair and a red pair. The green pair of goggles came with the laser. I uh, ordered a red pair of goggles as it is further away on the light spectrum from the blue laser. So this cuts out more light from the blue laser than the green pair does. They're also um, safety glasses. So if I wanted, I could wear those while working on the router. That's going to kind of mess up what I'm seeing just because it cuts out the different frequencies of light. So things look strange when you use those. But if you're on, on a router, this is spinning, it's cutting things, little chunks of wood or whatever you're cutting can fly out and you don't want that in your eyes. So if you don't have a pair of safety glasses and you don't wear glasses, get a pair of safety glasses. They're very cheap and your eyes are irreplaceable. As for understanding about the eyes, trust me, I know. I spent five days in the hospital after being hit in the face with a piece of wood and it hit one of my eyes. And that was kind of a scary thing because I lost sight in that eye immediately and didn't know if I'd ever get it back. I was um, not very old at the time, 10 or 11 years old, and um, fortunately I was able to, uh, after uh, like I said, about five days in the hospital, my sight did come back. I did have to see a specialist for a number of years to check to make sure everything was healed correctly and I wasn't getting any side effects from that. So safety goggles for the laser, 
to keep the laser from going in and safety goggles for the router to keep chunks of anything going in your eye super important you cannot replace your eyes at this time always wear your blocking safety glasses when you're working with the laser the laser is focused down on your material that you're cutting it can reflect up and that again very bad for your eyes eyes do not like lasers so always always when you're burning with the laser wear your safety glasses for that and what I do is when I leave which I try not to do while burning or cutting I want to maintain visual contact on the machines what I will do though is come up here lock the door so now this door will not open I also take my safety glasses and I hang them down here on the doorknob as a reminder that the laser is in there cutting then everybody who's in the house knows that when the goggles are hanging here that means the laser is potentially going and they should either avoid going in the utility closet or they need to put these things on also they will need to unlock the door so that's a second reminder that the laser might be going and that they need to be careful when they come in here typically there's no reason for anybody to come in here uh, if there was those rules are in place something you may not think of as a safety feature are these drag chains the laser came with a drag chain which helps keep all these wires controlled so they're not getting caught as the you know the machines moving around on my router I added a drag chain to keep all of the wires from the the gantry up here all controlled so that they're out of the way and I don't have to worry about them catching on anything extra wires over here are wrapped up they're zip tied so they're out of the way so my working area is clear of obstructions so I don't need to worry about that the same with the laser one thing I, I don't like and I need to come up with a solution is this cable it does have a wrap which is nice so it keeps all the wires for the gantry over here so for the laser the power for the laser and the power for the laser controller and then the stepper motor cable all come through here then get down here and go through the drag chain all the way back to the controller and I do have these wires zip tied so they get standard control they stay out of the way when I'm cutting this however as the laser is moving especially when we come over here in the X direction see what happens it comes down onto the material which isn't a problem now if it were to move in the Y direction now this cable starting to get bound up down here um, and there's all sorts of things that could happen it could pop up it could it could come over and get caught on the controller itself and then as it's coming back this way it might pull and that's not good on the wires um, it also can drag across your material that you're cutting as you're working on it and if it's not secured down it can move it and that'll ruin your burn so not so much safety in that case other than it could potentially rip some of these wires out if it really got caught and pulled hard so what I need to do is come up with some method of holding this up out of the way but being flexible enough that as it's moving I don't impede the travel of the gantry in any one of its two axes so something to work on my first idea is to hook something here there's an opening there's a hole right here have some sort of piece of metal or fiberglass that comes over here that this can hang from that will flex so as it moves around this will at least be held up out of the way another safety feature that I have not gotten around to installing yet is some sort of ventilation for this room now this is the furnace room and there is there is an air return right here um, but that's not a good ventilation because that's going to then take anything I'm burning in here and spreading that throughout the entire house so it may lessen the concentration but it's spreading it everywhere so what I hope to do is right above the laser up in this area I'd like to mount just a, a cheap old um, bathroom vent fan and then what I'll be able to do is just run a pipe 
across through the ceiling and you probably can't see but back in this corner past the insulation I can go out the side of the house and just put a put a little vent hood on there so that'll be a relatively easy and inexpensive way and then I might have to build some sort of cover hood to help take some of the fumes from the laser and make sure that they go up into that exhaust fan the other thing I can do is there is a fresh air intake here for the house that uh, is left over from before we actually got the air exchanger so that's no longer needed I can easily open that up to make sure there's a fresh air supply coming into the utility closet and then right up the exhaust fan so that's another safety feature I haven't put in place so right now I need to be careful about what I'm burning many things can give off some toxic fumes and that's not healthy to be breathing those things so another thing to keep in mind so just a few basic safety tips I'd love to hear what your safety tips are and what your rules are in your shop about other people coming in what they're supposed to do what they're not supposed to do put those in the comments below if you like this video please subscribe or at least like the video those things help and uh, keeps uh, more of this content going thank you for watching